I, I went back to China with the Seattle dream of the internet. I believe this thing is going to change the world. I believe this thing will be good, big. But whether Alibaba, uh, whether Jack Ma and his team can be successful, I don't know. I told the team somebody will be successful, but not, may not be us. We have to work very hard. To understand some of Jack Ma's accomplishments, you have to understand where he started. He was from a poor family in communist China. And to make it worse, he was a bad student. Based on traditional standards, he was a lost cause. But early on, you could see that Ma was different. Growing up, he would give visitors free tours in exchange to practice his English. Fast forward to 1995, he had his own translation company, and it brought him to the US. And it was during that time that Ma was introduced to the internet. My friend Stuart, he said, Jack, this is internet. You can find whatever you can find through the internet. I say, really? So I, I searched uh, the word beer, B-E-I, beer. Very simple word. I did not know why I searched the beer. Beer, and I find American beer, Germany beer, and no Chinese beer. So I was curious. So I searched China. And uh, all info search agency, no China, no data. And I told my friend, can we make a Chinese homepage and post that inside and see what's the result? So I made a, a, a Hope Translation Agency, the homepage. Very ugly looking homepage. 9.30 we launched it and uh, 12 o'clock I received uh, five emails. Three from USA, one from Japan, one from Germany. I was so excited. I think this is something interesting. Ma left the US shortly after and went back to China with an idea to revolutionize their working class by utilizing e-commerce. Now today, his way seems logical, but back then, he got a lot of resistance. Not only did he have to win over the market, but he had to navigate through the communist Chinese government in order to operate and grow his business. If that wasn't hard enough, he had no money and no connections. So it were tough days in China, year 2006, uh, 1996, 1997, and then uh, I would go nowhere because we, we only, I borrowed $2,000 from my friends and families and relatives together. So we compete with China Telecom. They have money, they have the mouth, SOE, they are state owned the business, they compete with us. Finally, you know, they cannot kill us because we want to survive. And we, of course, cannot kill China Telecom. So we had a joint venture, they have a 70%, we have 30%. And I was so stupid, I think they really love us, but they got us because they want to kill us. <laughs> uh, five, seven ball seats, they have a five, we got a two, everything, without I even say our idea, say we don't like it. So, so I say, maybe I should go into Beijing, go to Beijing, join the government, maybe they can help us promoting the internet. So we went to Beijing, joined the MOFTEC, Ministry of Foreign Trade, as a part-time job, contract for 14 months. I work inside, I find, Government can never ever promote the internet, uh, you know, make internet business, because the philosophy of internet is try to develop, how to make other people develop the business. But the government they want to control at that time, so it's a totally different philosophy. They are smart, they're good people, but they think, how can I make it using internet to manage and control? But we think we should make not control, making other people develop. So different philosophy, I think it won't work, so I left. And then uh, during these days, I met Jerry Yan, all right? And then I uh, think, well, you know, no chance in the government, no chance in that, and then I believe we should not give up. So I was in a desperate, and think a lot, I said, let's go do it again. So we went back to Hangzhou. Start, I, I invited the 18, found, you know, my students and friends in my apartment. Year 1999, February 21st. We took the video. I was talking about you know, the future. People look at me, these guys are crazy. Right? <laughs> but most people cannot find jobs. So I say, well, if you have an idea, let's do it. They started their Alibaba journey in 1999, shortly after they got a $5 million investment from Goldman Sachs and a $20 million investment from SoftBank, which helped draw some attention. But it wasn't until 2001 that there was a breakthrough. They figured out that entrepreneurs are making so much money on the site that they were willing to pay $5,000 to appear on the top of the page. So Alibaba launched a paid subscription service for premium members. And in hustler spirit, Jack Ma went on tour, speaking to different groups of entrepreneurs around China, 
while his sales team followed up one by one, converting customers. After a few years, they realized that they were leaving money on the table because a lot of users were coming to the site, but a good amount of them weren't buying. So in response to that, Ma set up an escrow account that would change the game. It's a payment system because this was, we, we found this company year 2004 because people in China talk a lot on the e-commerce. They negotiate, they talk, but they don't buy because they worry about the money, give him and this guy run away. And this guy say, well, I send you things, I don't get the money. So I went to all the banks and tried to convince the banks, can you help me with the payment? The banks say, your business is too small, we don't want it. So we have to, we build up a, a very stupid service called Alipay, it's escrow services. If you want to buy things from me, you wire the money to Jerry. And Jerry will let me know, I got a product, uh, you got money, so I, I send the products. If you're happy, pay me. Not happy, return the money, return products. That people say, year 2003, they say, this is the most stupid idea I've ever heard. Because <laughs> why you don't use credit card? Guys, we don't have credit cards. <laughs> so we made that. At this point, Alibaba was gaining momentum, but they still weren't making any money. It wasn't until 2005 six years after they started Alibaba that they finally made a profit. Now most people would be happy that they survived and are making money, but not Ma. Jack Ma decided to go after the biggest player in the game, which was eBay, and they controlled 95% of the market worldwide. Now Ma knew he couldn't go head to head with eBay because they had Amazon's resources. So for his coup to be successful, he needed an approach that they weren't ready for. So he released an e-commerce site called Taobao that was aimed at small businesses and was free for the first three years. I think because of the internet, next to 30 years, globalization should help small business going globally. For China, because of us, last year we created at least 14 million jobs for China by helping small business by enable small business with the technology we have, with the resources we gather together. So if we can help most small business in the world, we can help millions and millions of people create jobs, innovations. So we will never change it. So our global strategy is that we want to build up an EWTO, that helping small business sell, buy, cross the board help consumers, help American consumers, help the African consumers to buy online within 72 hours they can receive the products. Jack launched Taobao and it worked. The platform helped China develop their infrastructure and it helped Alibaba separate themselves in the market. The company grew fast and as they started to get more market share, Amazon tried to buy them out, but Jack Ma declined. Ma felt that they didn't have the same vision. So shortly after, in 2007, Alibaba decided to team up with Yahoo instead, and they sold 40% of the company for $1 billion. That move was key because it gave Alibaba the resources to nullify Amazon. Later on that year, Alibaba passed eBay in profits for the first time, and eBay started to feel the heat. But Ma didn't sit back. When he saw that he had them on the ropes, he put more pressure on them and decided to extend its free services for another three years. Learn from your competitors. Don't hate your competitors. Big companies hate competitors. I love my competitors. Without competitors, we will never grow that much fast. Year 2003, when we start e you know, Taobao, it's a C2C auction model. eBay, my competitor at that time, is $80 billion market cap. We, you know, small, tiny. But we start to compete. It's a lot of fun to compete with big guys. You know, if I start to have a boxing with Mike Tyson, I'm honored, you know. If you have a chance to compete with somebody, if it is, it is a great competitor, you learn. We learn from our competitors. We respect them. Everything they move, you grow. And the other thing I want to share with you is that competitors are the best laboratory for you. Because competitors study you. Any innovative ideas they come, you learn that. Don't copy them, learn from them. So 
I love my competitors. Every time when I look at them, I wish I'd mine. But I, in China, people say, Jack, you are so crazy. Because uh, four years ago, I said, when I look at my telescope, I never see my competitors. And people say, how could you be that? And I say, no, I'm looking for examples, models. Why should I look for competitors? Competitors are everywhere. And when you compete, having fun, the most interesting part of the business is competition. To make your competitors angry, to make your competitors jumping around, that's the skill you should have. Not make yourself jumping around angry. <laughs> Right. Over the next few years, the world went through a recession, and big companies that have been around forever were falling left and right. But during that same time, Alibaba grew. Alibaba's platform catered to small businesses and gave them access to the resources they needed to thrive, which in turn grew their user base. So the other thing I want to share with you here is always I believe that small is beautiful. And this financial crisis, it give a lot of, dis it's a disaster to big companies. This war in 21st century, I think in last century, it's big is better. You have a big, you know, a factory, big amount, and you know, everything's big, it's good. This century, in the 21st century, I always believe small is beautiful because it's not how fast your machine is. It's not how many equipments you have. It is how quickly you can change yourself to meet the market because the information time, internet, technology make a difference. So the world IT in the last century is designed for manufacture. And this century, IT is designed for making, to help the consumers. So I think this is a disaster for big companies, century disaster for big companies, but it is a great opportunity for small business. For this financial crisis, we see a lot of big companies. We never thought they would die. AIG, it, to me, it's like empire. How could that happen, right? All the G, you know, the, the big car companies, which we respect, we always want to be there. But today, they all died. And let, look at the SMEs. We still feel painful, but we are happy in our heart because we still survive. And we heard so many stories about big companies giving trouble. And, the, and I see the society, the government, pay too much attention to these big troublemakers. <laughs> they are the troublemakers. And we give them enough support. Let them die. It's the time for them to die because they make troubles. What's amazing is that Jack Ma had a vision in 1995 and dedicated his life to it for 10 years before he saw his first profit. Then as soon as he started making money, he took on one of the biggest companies in the world and won. Today, Alibaba is the largest e-commerce company in the world and Ma is considered the richest man in China. So I want to tell you, never ever give up your dreams. And today, I encourage myself and our team it reminds us one thing that always and I want to share with you finish my speech that today is very difficult tomorrow is much more difficult but the day of tomorrow is very beautiful most people die tomorrow evening <laughs> you will never be able to see the day of tomorrow sunshine if you give up the hope you have you will know you will not see it if you give up your employees you will never see it if you give up your customers, you were dead. But if you give up shareholders, you will get a better one. <laughs>